looked pretty comfortable. It looked like you guys were able to control the match. Did it feel that way to you? And if so, how were you able to impose your will on this, on this match? Well, I think we managed both legs really well. Uh, we didn't give up the way goal, which led into this game. And, you know, we knew they, uh, you know, would want to come out. And, uh, and yet, we wanted to be aggressive as well. And, and we went for the first goal. Um, and we got it. You know, and, uh, it was something we worked on in terms of getting in that left channel. And, uh, it was a great goal. And then that meant now that we could uh, manage the game with the ball, which we did second half. You, you saw the possession uh, that we had, and uh, you know we were able to keep them from attacking by doing that and keep them from playing the transition they like to play by slowing the tempo down with the ball. And uh, we were very patient and organized. They had a hard time breaking us down, and then we found the counterattack, which I knew would be on. Uh, as they try to push, because we knew they needed two goals after they found the first one. So I thought it was very well managed overall. It wasn't without uh, some maneuvering that you had to make when Jorge Villafania came out of the match, putting the number 12 left back compared to Papa Lattery in the center back. What were your instructions to Papa when he went in, and what did you want to see from your group at that time? Well, they were, like I said, they needed two goals, so they started just throwing numbers forward and putting guys in up top, so it made sense to kind of put Paparato in and, and push Liam over to left back. He could sit in, and we almost were playing with three central defenders, um, so it made sense at that stage in, in the game, and then when they made their last move, putting their shot in, and we went to, to two holding mids just to kind of give us an extra number defensively, um, you know, but listen, it's the players. It's nothing to do with my moves or things I do. It's, it's them playing inside the lines and uh, this team, they play for each other. They're very hungry. The last six games were unbeaten and last six games we've been in playoff mode. We've been under massive pressure and uh, for this group to play the football they're playing uh, under massive pressure is a really good sign. With four teams to go or four uh, teams left and three games to go and we have two teams in our way. So now for the second uh, year and the second time in three years here in the Western Conference two weeks before the first match against FC Dallas. How do you manage those two weeks, especially with, with the FIFA break coming up, knowing that Darlington, Will, Alvis are going away? What are the next couple weeks going to look like for you guys, especially through the, the FIFA day? Well, we need to recharge and recover from this game. Uh, we have time to do that. Um, and then we need to get back to training and keep getting better. You know, I think we're still scratching the surface of the, the level this team can, can play at. Um, you know, Today we did some things we haven't done all year. So that's exciting because I think we still in the next couple of weeks can go to another level. Thanks, Caleb. Guys. Coach, your thoughts on going up against Dallas? Top season yeah, good, good team, very good team. We've been playing good teams, you know, uh, late in the year. And like I said, we've been in playoff mode. I think that's helped us. Uh, I think our experience in the playoffs helped us in this series. You know, we've already won a playoff series versus Seattle in 2013. And I think this is now our fourth or it's our fourth win in the playoffs. So, so the maturity we showed today, the professionalism we showed, and how we managed the, this leg, but also both legs, I thought was was, uh, was visible. Um, you know, so obviously Dallas is a good team, and uh, um, but we've been beating good teams. So I know these guys will be up for it. You would, would you say you made the most of your limited opportunities, relatively speaking? Although you had the ball, it seemed like you didn't have. Basically, you capitalized on your two most dangerous yeah. chances. Well, I think it's a little bit of a tough question because we, we found the early goal, so then obviously we managed the rest of the game in a way that was indicative of finding that first goal. Yeah. No one were up. We're up two goals, basically. So yeah. if we didn't find the first goal, well, then we're probably pushing a little more. We're creating more chances. Yeah. But we found the first goal. That was what we wanted to do coming into the game, put some pressure on them. and. Uh, you know, I think you know the second half with us being a little more patient and, and not looking to go forward as much uh, was what we felt was the, the way to manage the game. I see. Were you expecting them to attack so much in the first 15 to 20 minutes? Yeah, they're at home. This is a record crowd. Um, you know, they're they're a good team. They have a lot of confidence. They have a good spirit in their team. So we knew they'd come come out, but uh, we wanted to be aggressive as well. So. Uh, we're at our best when we play that way. Uh, we're a team that keeps the ball. We're a team that creates chances. Uh, you know, we're a team this year. Not, we didn't score as many goals, but last two years we were top three in the league in scoring goals. So we're a team that usually scores goals, and we're used to that. We're used to carrying games. I think us finding the goal made them carry the game. They're not quite as comfortable when they have to carry a game. They're a little bit more comfortable when they can sit, absorb, and then counter. And uh, with us getting that first goal, that meant that they couldn't 
just sit in. They had to kind of carry the game, and you saw a little bit that second half. They, they had a tough time breaking us down. Um, you know, they're best in transition. And I think it also played played in the match with Kakuta coming out for sure. I mean, he was, he was probably their top guy early in the match and gave us a few problems. And, you know, him going out meant Rosales is in, and we started attacking that left channel a lot when Rosales went in, went in because, you know, he's a guy that typically doesn't want to track too much. So I thought... Um, that definitely turned the game a bit. So that Rick helped Larian. your cause a little bit just because there was a loss, loss of speed uh, with Mana out as well? Yeah, I mean, again, they're a team that's best on the break. So Kakuda, I mean, I've watched time and again him win games that, you know, honestly, I'm not sure they deserve to win the game, but he'll pull off a play and, you know, on a counter. And, you know, they've done that time and again. So that was our number one fear was, was Kakuda on the counter attack. With you went Valerian. with Spria in the starting lineup. What yeah. was that? Uh, yeah, I just felt he was, it, it was the right game to go with him. You know, he brings a little more defending. Um, he was in good form the last couple of weeks. He hadn't played for a couple of games. His head was screwed on right, and I just had a good feeling about him. So I went with it. With Valerian Wallace uh, being suspended for the next game with yellow card accumulation, how does that kind of change how you have to prepare in the next uh, two weeks? Uh, we manage, you know, injuries, guys out all year. So international duty. So, you know, we got, we got guys to put in. We'll come up with a plan. We'll come up with the right system to play, and, and we'll look at Dallas and factor all those things in, and and uh, you know make decisions. But um, you know we certainly don't want Valeria or Rodney out, but we've got good guys to step in in their absence. How's he Jorge? Get, Jorge will be fine. He didn't get on the score sheet, so he's not going to get the headlines. But what does Darlington Nagby bring in a game like this? I mean, I thought everybody put a shift in today. You know, everybody in every position I thought played well and was solid. Defensively, we were outstanding. We had a hard time creating much, you know, and they had a lot of the ball, but they had a hard time breaking us down. Um, you know, like I said, possession and our two goals were great. Uh, Adi, I thought, was, was one of his best games of the year, uh, the way he held the ball up against probably the best central defender in the league. Um, you know, everybody played well, but Darlington, uh, it wasn't even just his attacking, his defending. I'm not sure. You've probably got the stats, Chris, because you always got them. But yeah. not sure. how many balls did he win? He won a lot of balls today, you know. So he's just proven to be one of the better number eight box-to-box -box mids uh, in the league, which is exciting. What, what kind of yeah. message does, did, did your team send over these two games in the in the response to that emotional win over, over Casey to get to this point? Well, you know, I've, I've been – around teams now as a head coach for a while and uh, you know some years you just seem to peak at the right time and you, you build an aura and this team's building an aura and you build that aura by winning games that are you know crazy sometimes with the KC and the posts and I've always felt when those things happen there's a reason it happens because you usually don't go and then lose the next game when that happens um, you know so this team has a lot of belief that we can win it all this year. You're going up against FC Dallas have you since made up with Oscar Pareja uh, from your <laughs> Yeah, we're man. fine. We're fine. Um, you know, he apologized uh, for that, and, and so did I. Um, that's, that's in the heat of the battle. We leave it on the field. Thanks, Kayla. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Kayla.